Welcome back to The Stuff Your Accountant Isn't Telling You. And today we are going to talk about why the P&L or the profit and loss statement is very similar to your favorite movie. Now, this is something that you probably would never hear an accountant tell you, but we're going to break it down and tell you why they are similar. And stay tuned for today's tax tea because it is going to be good. Welcome to the podcast where we tell small business owners how to use the secrets and strategies that big businesses use to increase their profitability. So without further ado, let me bring on my guest, Lola. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode. Now, how has your week been? My week has been great. It's been a productive week. We're what? Today's Wednesday. Uh, Super productive week. Um... Yeah, that's about it without going into too much detail. <laughs> I mean, you? do How share if there are more details to share. I mean, I'm just trying to be mindful of the time here. But since you since you asked, um, been productive, just came back from a dinner with uh, the ladies in, in our neighborhood. So that was nice. Um, we have a little nice community in the neighborhood. One of the things of, you know, looking forward of coming to America and uh, living the American dream was to be able to go to ladies, go to dinner with the ladies in the neighborhood. So my little American dream has been fulfilled. So, yeah, it's nice. Awesome. <laughs> How awesome. You, how's your week going? <laughs> it has been a good week. I mean, um, making progress. I, I will say I think I've been a little more tired than usual. And part of that is just going to bed late. Um, but it's been a productive week. Um, we had a new employee in the Philippines start. So that's always Ooh. interesting of just having that's new charming. employees that are like in a 13 hour time zone difference and yep. staying up later. Their time zone. Yeah. So it's like staying up later to, to really help um, get things rolling. But I think it's all part of creating a amazing system that can support more and more clients and we're still continuing to onboard clients. So that is, uh, I'm still, I'm excited about it. Yeah, I will say that is pretty exciting. We had a little welcome to the, I was going to say welcome to the hood, but no, welcome to the company celebration for Jeremy virtually when he started. Um, And so that was nice. I I think we need to have more, more like uh, employee meetings, Terrell voting for more employee meetings (laughs) (laughs) we will see i guess that is on the plan one of the things that i told the team is that probably in 2024 i'm going to need to probably fly out to the philippines um and i was like you know if we hit all of our goals and we grow the way the rate that we are projecting to grow then i probably will be making a trip out in the philippines um you say i Yes, I did. Um, why did you just say why? Why I? Why not us? Why not we? Um, we'll see about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, you said hitting our goals. You didn't say hitting the marketing goals. Let's be clear here. Plus, I know. I mean, I know I'm going to hit my goals on the marketing side of things. But um, this well, that's uh, great. this I plan to go. No, no, no. It's we. It's a company meeting. That means all employees. All employees need to be included, including myself. We will see. <laughs> that is, that I don't is like what I will tone. say. We will see. <laughs> I don't, I don't like your tone, but okay. Everyone that showed up to listen to the show today, you didn't show up to listen to our company update. Um, <laughs> what you really showed up for is to hear about this topic that we're going to talk about of how your financial state, your PL, is like your favorite movie. Now, one of the before we jump into that topic, I want to get what is your thoughts when I first came up with that topic or when I first proposed that? What were you thinking initially? I was like, I'm curious to see how this is going to go. Um, and I'm curious to see how Terrell is going to kind of basically tie the income statement to a movie. Um, I think one of the things that you're very gifted at is being able to simplify and kind of connect the dots on stuff. So I was eager to see how you were going to bring the story and the plot together, um, because I think it's income statements specifically are, I think, a uh, financial statement that is oftentimes underestimated in how powerful it can be. There's so many benefits of it. It's like the superhero with all with multiple powers or whatever. And so I, I think I'm I'm interested to see how you're going to connect it. So yeah, I'm curious. Where are we starting? 
Mm. That is an interesting perspective. So we will see if I can live up to the expectation. <laughs> no pressure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. You can do it. I have faith in you. Yes, yeah, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm I'm like I'm like Michael Jordan in the fourth quarter when the game is on the line. Like the pressure doesn't bother me. Exactly. Just, Michael Jordan always um, delivers. So it's not even an issue, man. Yeah, so 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 we got this. All right. So to, to kick the topic off, I, I do oh, now think it's weak. you know now it's weak. The huh? best way <laughs> let me stay focused. Yes. And I think the best <laughs> way to sorry. the best way to approach that is really let's talk about your favorite movie. So mm. what is your favorite movie? I have to pick one. Yes, you do have to pick one. My favorite movie. Oh, damn. My favorite movie, I would say I'm between. Okay, you said pick one. Let me just pick one. Air Force One. Okay. Your favorite movie is Air Force One. Um, and what I will say is to everyone that are, is watching and listening, start thinking about your favorite movie. Because we're going to make this very, very relevant. So when you think about Air Force One for yourself, it's like, why is that your favorite movie? I would say Air Force One is my favorite movie because there's a bad guy. There's a good guy. I just love the story of the hero winning. And it's my favorite movie because they do such a good job of basically having the president, Harrison Ford, right? I think is the main character, defend the plane and save all of the passengers who are basically at risk from the terrorists. So, um, and just the thrill, and he's pretty much just a badass. I mean, it's kind of like he defies the, in my view, defies the stereotype, even though he was Indiana Jones. But I mean, in this movie, he's a little bit older defies he was indiana jones right i just want to make sure i, I didn't like mess that up yes he indiana, okay he's a lot older <laughs> yes yeah, so he's a lot older in <laughs> in air force one and so i just really like it because i like i'm a sucker i'm not gonna lie i'm a sucker for like patriotic movies which is funny because i'm not really i'm not even originally american but i think just the idea of like the american patriotism and saving the country and like protecting the country so anyways yeah that's why how about that's that's why i like it how about yours what is your favorite movie um i'm an interesting one because growing up my favorite movie was um man in the iron mask and it was Wait, a couple of the reasons one with so leonardo dicaprio yes yes and the one where he has like an evil twin brother who locks him up. Yes, that, that is okay. true. That okay. is true. That, <laughs> okay. that is true. Where <laughs> there is so the, the storyline is the king had twin had twin boys, and so when you're the king and you have a son, that one is going. Your oldest son is going to be the one to, that, that ascends to the throne. Mm -hmm. Well, if you have twin boys you don't really know which one is the older one. So what the king decided was that they would lock one of the sons away and they put him in a iron mask so no one would ever see his face. They kept him in the dungeon. And then the one son that he kept, that one ascends to the throne. The problem is that son turns out to be a very bad yeah. apple, but yeah. that person is the king. So the three musketeers... Or the yeah, the yeah, the three musketeers devise a plan of saying, we're gonna break out the son who's in the dungeon, and we're going to swap the two of them out, and we're gonna let him become the king. We'll put the bad son in the mask and leave him in the dungeon so no one will know he exists. And so there's this plan to execute that strategy, and how are you going to do it? without getting caught and without other people knowing what is happening because the entire army is sworn to defend the king. Right. So how do you pull that off? Now, the reason why I bring all that up, I mean, because I, and I think that it becomes very relevant to the financial statements, I think is when you, people think about their, 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 their favorite movie, the big thing that people tend to think about is, you know, the storyline. Mm -hmm. and, and I think the reason why that becomes such an impactful thing is because, you know, if you've done any studies, and I remember spending some time with um, several writers and producers of movies and films and TV shows, and I remember spending some time with them volunteering at some 
film festivals and just having some time to interact with them and understanding like there really is a science to how you write a good movie mm-hmm. now. And one of the big things about it is the storyline and it usually follows a very, very similar plot. And I remember when I read a book, um, I read a book about, you know, kind of the, 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 the story brand and kind of the movie model of just how just about every major film that has ever done well follows the same kind of outline. And after reading that book, I was like, oh, my gosh, like, it really is very true. Most of the the movies that do well. Well, I'm not going to tell people what the outline is, because I will say is once you understand the outline, it does kind of ruin movies for you somewhere. (laughs) (laughs) All right. (laughs) Because I mean, I can do that. I mean, you almost know what's going to happen before it happens. Like, because there are times where I'm watching a movie and I'm like, oh man, that person's about to die soon. And it's like, you know it because you can see the storyline playing out. Um, And sometimes, like I said, when you and I are watching movies, I try not to like point that out because it's like, I already know what's going to happen here. But I feel Uh, like, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like you can still enjoy the movie without, like you can still enjoy the movie even though you know, like there are even times where you and I are watching stuff and I'm just like, okay, this person's about to die. Or yeah, you know, babe, this person's about to this person's about to face an obstacle. It's cancer. This is what it is. And often, more times than not, it ends up being what we say. But I think you can still enjoy the movie. But I, I guess we don't want to. But that's that because hard. that's because you're guessing. I know. I am not <laughs> guessing all the time. <laughs> I, but I mean, but, but I guess it, for me, it's, it's like it, it's almost like in watching the movie, I can see the formula playing out. Like for me it's like a mathematical formula now. Like after studying it for a couple of years and studying the writing process and stuff like that and studying how film, how television and how like major movies and how those are developed to where it's like, for me, it's like it's like a math, math problem. Like I know how the math adds up. So it's like, I know, I'm not surprised at what the answer is. If someone tells me, you know, the answer of, hey, was you know two times three when someone says six i'm like yeah i knew that was coming i'm not like one of those i'm not like a small child who's like it's six oh my gosh it's six it's like i knew it was coming and i think you know when you get to that point i I think it, it does tend to um it can change your movie watching experience but i think you know i say all of that to say that I think the same thing happens with your profit and loss statement, because after years of studying businesses and profit and loss statements, it's almost like I can look at a profit and loss statement and within about 15, 20 minutes, I can tell you, especially if I have a little bit of history on the business, I can tell you what's going to happen next in that business Um, with relative accuracy. I can tell you, hey, I'm telling you what's about to happen next in this business. And and you can kind of see it coming. And I think that if you learn how to look at the financial statements the same way you do a movie, then most business owners will be able to kind of predict what's going to happen financially in their business before it happens so they can actually do something about it. Okay. So if you were, you said it's, I guess you're comparing financial statements or specifically the income statement to a movie where you're saying if you can anticipate if you know what if you are able to read your financial statements or your income statement let me go back to the income statement specifically you almost can predict what is going to come based on what your numbers are and based on what your numbers are showing you i guess from a business owner standpoint, looking in, like, why is this, why is this important? And how does that actually make that? How does that actually benefit my business if I'm a business owner? I mean, because I think at the end of the day, every business has some type of financial goal. Now, you may have some business owners who say, well, our goal isn't financial. Our goal is just to do good. There still is a dollar figure attached to your doing good. Right. Like if we really sat down and looked at the good you want to do, we can still bring it down to there's a price tag to it, which means 
That's what your business's financial goal should be, is to achieve that amount of money so you can do the good that you want to do. And so I always say that every business, even if you're a for-profit or a not-for-profit, every business has or every organization has a financial objective. And the, I mean, it's almost like, you know, like I said, you know, if you're, you're trying to figure out, you know, how to achieve that financial objective, the best thing for you to do is to be able to have signs that you are headed in the right direction. And so I think the same thing happens, you know, with a business is if you can understand the signs and see where your situation is leading you, you'll be able to kind of predict, are we going to actually get closer to the objective that we're headed to? And I think if you can read the financials, you'll understand that a lot more. I mean, and for the business owner, that becomes a whole lot less stressful than just trying to just try it out and hope and pray you get there. But it's like, if you can get there with almost, you know, some sense of predictive accuracy, Mm -hmm. then that's a lot less stressful and you'll enjoy the process a whole lot more. Yeah, and I like what you said about instead of just kind of guessing, like get, get kind of a method to how you, what, what works right on the financial side or what works on the income statement side. So I'm curious on kind of making the connection between the movies and like the income statement for movies. We know that there's movies that like just are flops, right? Where people are trying to go kind of a different angle and then it just, it just does not hit it. They spend millions of dollars on the on this on this movie and it just flops at the box office. So as a business owner, if I'm thinking like, OK, what does success look like for me? Like, how do I get that perfect, for lack of a better word, like ingredient to kind of make sure that, hey, when I am going in a certain direction, I know that the direction I'm headed in is a successful one versus just kind of praying and hoping that I'm going the right way. Yeah. No, I, I I agree. And I think part of that is, you know, defining as a success is you kind of laying out what your, you know, what your goals are, what you're interested in and defining that, which, you know, that's something we talked about in the small business CFO program where we talked about defining your goals and just how to actually define financial goals for your business. And I think until you define kind of what your goals are, um, you really don't have anything to aim for. So I think once you define what those goals are and you start taking action, I think that is where what we're talking about today becomes very, very handy on how do you read your financial statements like you watch a movie. Um, and because even if it's your favorite type of movie, for example, you said that it's Air Force One. If you were watching a Air Force One-like movie, even if you hadn't seen the movie before, you kind of know or you can almost guess what's going to happen next because right. it's going to follow a very similar formula that Air Force One follow. And Air Force One follows a very similar formula as most movies. Now, I'm not going to I'm not going to tell you like I'm not going to break it down and spoil movies for you. But I will say is Air Force One follows a very similar three act structure. And, and what I mean by that three-act structure is in, is act one, act two, act three. So act one is going to be where you have you get introduced to the main characters. And you also get introduced to kind of like, you know, a little bit about the, the, the main character. You find out a little bit about the main character's potential, what they're capable of. And you kind of start to learn and like the main character is what typically happens in, in, you know, in act one. And then when you get to act two, that's where you start to meet some of the supporting characters and you start to learn a little bit more about like who the, who the villain is, who the bad guy is. And you start to get exposed to the drama of the situation. And then in act three is where you start to see kind of like the wrap up, and the conclusion of, okay, how does the story, you know, start? What's the conclusion we have on this story? Or if it's one of those movies that have a cliffhanger where they leave you hanging like, what was it? The, um, what's the vampire movie series? Twilight. Uh, 
Yeah. Like one of the Twilight movies that ends in a to be continued mm-hmm. where it just it just leaves you hanging because the conclusion is actually going to happen in the next movie and they just want you to come back to watch the watch it again. So you do have that where there's some some movies that just don't resolve the issue. They just leave it hanging for the next movie to come up. So between those three acts, I think they are a lot similar to how you look at your P&L. Okay, let's break it down. So the first part that I will always tell people is like in act one, where you meet in a movie, that's where you meet the main character. You find out, you know, Harrison Ford is the president, find out he has family that he loves, he has a daughter, you know, he has the potential to be a really good president. Um, He's outspoken. He He doesn't care about being politically correct. And he has to go on this trip. Yes. Got it. You kind of get the point. I mean, the title will probably tell you Air Force One means it's going to happen on a plane. <laughs> <laughs> they but, weren't very so creative act, with that, but okay. <laughs> so so Act One just kind of introduces you that. Now, I think the same thing happens with a business because when you're looking at the profit and loss statement, I always say is Act One is probably re- your revenue, your cost of goods sold, and your gross margin. Okay. Like Because in that part of the business, like, by looking at a person's revenue, cost of goods sold, and gross margin, I kind of get an idea on what products do you sell, like, or what services do you offer. Mm-hmm. I know which ones you actually make money on. Like, I know which ones you actually sell because oftentimes when I'm talking to business owners and I ask them, like, you know, okay, what do you do? And they'll say, you know, oh, we we provide, you know. We provide transportation solutions to our our customers. Like, okay, let me see your financials. And then when you look at it, you're like, oh, okay, all right, you guys are an airline. Got it. Okay, you, you guys are an airline because most of your revenue comes from that. And okay, so I you're think saying once- if you look at the categories of, okay, how is your... If you're looking at the categories of how are you making money, then that kind of t- that gives me an idea of the type of company that you are. Like, what do you sell? Yeah, I mean, because you make your, your money? products. Yeah, because it's like your products are going to be the main characters in your business story. Yeah, I mean, your your, your products and the customers Services. you sell to are yep. going to be those are the main characters of your business. Because the truth of the matter is, if you don't have products and you don't have customers who are buying those products you really don't have a business. You just kind of have a expensive hobby. And so Agreed. that's where I think that, you know, looking at your revenue is going to, to introduce us to your products and your customers. Now the cogs give us an idea on like, Hey, how much are you potential a good president? Does- are you a bad president? <laughs> <laughs> it start it starts to paint a little bit, of, you know, a little bit of, it starts to paint a little bit more of the picture because if a person right. came to me and said, Hey, you know, my product is X, the price, you know, we're a and customers pay us, you know, $300 a month for this product. Okay. I don't know if that's good or bad yet exactly. until I see what your cost of goods sold are. Exactly. Yep. Now, if you come back to me and you say your cost of goods sold are $299, I'm like, that doesn't sound like a good product. And this is exactly why I always say, and people like, this is something I say often. I'm not impressed when people tell me how much revenue their business makes. That doesn't impress me. You make $30 million a year. Wonderful. What's your margin? Like, how much is it actually costing you to make this product or provide this service? Because then that really tells me, like you said, the story, right? Like, are you making money? Do you have a profitable business? What's your gross margin? Like, are you managing your costs properly? Do you know that it costs you less to make this product or provide the service than what you're selling it for? Like, there's just so much in that, that like, I think you're right. Like it does, it gives you the act one view of, hey, what is your story? Like, what kind of company are you right off the bat? Just looking at those three buckets that you mentioned. Yep. I mean, because it starts to help us understand also too, is like, is your business meaning that, hey, you have pretty solid margin in every individual unit or every individual service? Or are you kind of like a Netflix where you got to sell volume to where it's just like, is this a, is this a volume play or is this a, you know, a high profit play? 
I mean, because that tells us a lot about the story. Now, one of the things that I will say is like act one kind of concludes with what is the gross margin on the products and the services that you provide? Mm -hmm. What I will say is if your gross margin is really low, I can tell you're going to have a crappy business or you're going to have a really tough business if your gross margin is really low. Because it's, it's similar to like if you were watching a movie and they introduced the main character to you. The main character was somebody who really wasn't all that interesting. You really didn't like the person. You're not yeah. gonna like the rest of the movie. Like, yeah, that's you're probably true. gonna be like the movie was pretty bad. Yeah. And, and so I, I would say is you don't have to say it out loud because I don't want anybody to get offended. But it's like think about you know a bad movie that you have seen recently. <laughs> I can think of one very recently, yes. Mm -hmm. And what I would probably guess is the you probably thought the movie was bad, probably because when they introduced the main character and kind of the storyline of the main character, it was probably pretty weak. Yep, I would agree. And so, and, and I always tell people is the same thing happens in your business. If your gross margin is really bad and like the product, the cost of goods sold, gross margin... If that's not good, the rest of your movie or the rest of your business is going to struggle to survive. So you got to have a good act one. Yeah. One thing I was going to say, that's a really good point. One thing I was going to say was, if you think about it like this, the character sets the tone for the rest of the movie. Your gross margin sets the tone for the rest of the movie. So your revenue, your um, cost of goods sold, and then your gross margin is just kind of like, all right, this gross margin, and I'm sure this is about to sound really corny, but I don't care. This gross margin is about to go against all of your other expenses in the business. It's about to go against your marketing. It's about to go against like your selling expenses, all of these other things that you're having to like all the other charges. And it's like, if you don't make enough money on the gross margin side, you're not going to sustain you're not going to be able to sustain the business. And I think revenue is this grandiose. Oftentimes, like people paint like their revenue is like this grandiose, amazing character that is like strong and like amazing and wonderful. And then you kind of just look under the hood and it's just like, no, you did not do a good job of painting this character because at the end of the day, like once you go, once you dig a little deeper, it's not strong because you got a bunch of issues or your cost is too high and your gross margin is low. But I got a little bit yeah. excited about about that. But no, no, I, I think I mean I, I think yeah. you're 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 absolutely right. I mean because I think when people focus so much on revenue, mm-hmm. it is almost like you know I will say is when you focus so much on revenue and you don't think about like your cost of goods sold and your gross margin, what you're really doing is you are creating a very shallow business. Yeah, because it may look very good on the outside, but then when you look and you see your gross margin is pretty bad. Like this is a very shallow business. It looks good because your top line is so great, but your gross margin sucks. I mean, that would be like watching a movie where you have, let's say, you know, you take an A-list actor Mm -hmm. in a movie and and it's been done many times where they take an A-list actor, someone who's really expensive to put in a movie, but the character that was created for that person, for example, (laughs) <laughs> the matrix <laughs> oh my gosh you said it let's be very clear let's be very clear we're talking about the matrix two no three no 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 three? no 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 it is Four? i don't know what number it is reloaded it's like whatever the new one no it's not the one reloaded. From 20 the one from 2022 that one yes the one from 2022 very absolutely bad. horrible movie Trash. you take a amazing a-list actor don't send us and any emails. Crash. You put him in. You put him in a storyline where his character is so much weaker than right. what his capability and his capacity is as an actor. And it's like it changed your whole opinion about like you're like Neo, I really yeah. liked him in John Wick. I really liked him in the other Matrix movies, yep. but in this one where they rewrote his character. Like, mm-hmm. this one just seems, it just he made the, the movie horrible. <laughs> yeah, no, Where, I agree. Yeah, that's actually a really good example. And I think, and that's what I would compare as to people who who brag about how high their revenue is. And, and I get it because a lot of times for you to get on the Inc. 5000 list, for you to get on the Fortune 500 list, it's all about your top line revenue number. It's not looking at, hey, well, what's your, 
how much money do you make on that revenue? It's just looking at how much revenue you have is how they judge who are the biggest companies. I didn't know that. So they're judging based on your revenue? Yep. They judge based on your revenue and they do not judge based on like how well you run the. And, and I think some of that comes down to just really hardcore fundamentals. Like if you don't have margin in your business, then yeah. you really don't have a great business. And like I said, you're going to struggle. Now, act two is where you get into meeting some of the you get to learn more about the villain. You actually get to meet some of the supporting cast. So if we go back to. Air Force One, this is where they've gotten on the plane. And then you find out like, hey, the terrorists stand up and the terrorists take over the plane. The terrorists start telling you what their demands are. And then you start finding out, you know, these other people in the president's cabinet. So where it's like, that's where act two happens because you meet these supporting cast members and you start to experience the drama of the struggle of how is the main character going to overcome the villains who have now, you know, shown themselves. And when it comes down to, you know, financially, when you're looking at your profit and loss statement, I'll tell them it's like act one, your main character comes through act one. You get to your gross margin. That kind of tells me, all right, do they have the potential to be great or is this going to be a struggle? Then when you start looking and you alluded to it earlier, you start looking at like your sales and marketing, your GNA, your all your other operating expenses. Mm-hmm. That's where the struggle comes in because now you got to decide which of these expenses am I going to spend money on to hopefully help the entire business grow. And I right. think that's where you really got to make some serious trade-offs and ask yourself, how much are we going to spend on marketing or do we spend it on this new office space for the staff or do we spend it on marketing or do we hire new employees because you don't have an unlimited amount of cash. So you got to deal with that drama as a business owner of like, hey, how are we going to navigate these challenges so that we can have some type of profit at the end of the day? Yeah, that's good. No, I, I like that. That's that's really good. I think just that the gross margin going up against the other expenses to really come out on top and the victory at the end of the day is having a net profit, not a net loss <laughs> coming out on top. It's like, hey, did you destroy the terrorist? Do you have a net profit on your PL? If you did not, hey, you were destroyed. Okay. That plane was hijacked and taken over. And I don't know, you might come back next, you might come back another day. Okay. Better luck another day, but not not today. <laughs> so yeah. I mean, and I think it goes back to just the 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 reality that, you know, if you're looking at act one, like when you're looking at your PL. If your gross margin is too low, your gross margin is not going to be strong enough to yeah. take on the other expenses in your business. It's like, mm-hmm. what's going to, I mean, because pretty much whenever I'm looking at a financial set of financial statements, if the gross margin is really low, then what I know is like, if we put that in movie terms, what just happened in your movie is your main character is mm-hmm. so weak that they're yeah. going to lose to the villains that they got to face now. Yeah. Like no one, not many people really want to see that movie. They don't want to see the good guy lose. Exactly. Which is why I love Air Force One, because is it realistic that Harrison Ford is like, you know, 60 something and like kicking the butts of these terrorists? Absolutely not. But they did a wonderful job of setting it up where they gave him ammunition. They said he served in the military. Like, remember, there was that scene where they were basically like after the plane was captured and they thought that he had like gotten out of the no, after they found out he was still on the plane. And they were like, yeah, the president did a selfish thing by staying on that and not getting out in the escape escape pod. And then they set the scene and they're like, well, no, he's well trained. He served in. I don't know where they say he served. He was a mili- He was on the military. He served. Served in, in he was special forces to where now you're like, all right, this is realistic. He actually has a real shot. And I think it goes back to like the stronger your gross margin is on your income statement, the more of a real shot that you actually have to tackle the challenges and that balance of trying to figure out like, hey, where do you spend money? And what do you spend money on? And do you have enough to tackle all of the expenses that are coming in your business? But if you're not if that gross margin doesn't have a good baseline or story, then you're going to be like, yeah, there's no way we're coming out on top of this situation. Yep. 
No, yeah. and and I agree. I mean, and one of the things that I will say is that, you know, when you're watching a movie, most of the movie happens during the drama phase, like mm-hmm. act two. Like most of your most of your energy, your up and down emotions are going to be spent in that in that part of the movie. And to be honest with you, that's why people go to movies is because they want to see the drama part of the movie. Yeah. And when it comes down to a business, for the most part, most people, you spend more time trying to navigate the drama of the business of how much do we invest in marketing to make sure we can get new customers? Like yeah. how much should we spend on our employee costs and how much should we be spending in this area, that area? Like yeah. which expenses should we cut and stuff like that? And I think if people start to think about it that way is that, hey, once I figure out how to get really good gross margin and and I manage my costs well and I increase my revenue, then I got to take on the other expenses and which challenges. And I think one of the good ways to think about that is, you know, looking at your expenses and saying, which one of these expenses are actually helping support improve the improvement of my gross margin? Things like, hey, the money we're spending on sales and marketing, is it actually helping us generate more sales and more revenue so that our gross margin stays healthy? And, And I think when you start looking at it that way, it really helps you start thinking through decisions like, is this an unnecessary enemy that I have or unnecessary challenge? Or is this expense actually helping, you know, me sustain a strong gross margin? I think that's, um, that's really good perspective. One of the things that I thought about as you were talking was, I think that when we look and see companies that have oftentimes like failed or been unsuccessful, large companies. I think a lot of it has been like poor management of just funds and just poor financial management to where the revenue could look great, but they just didn't do a good job of, like you said, being and really properly managing the drama. Because like you said, a lot of the action happens within the drama. And so what I've noticed oftentimes is even when I talk to founders and I talk to people who are raising capital for their companies, it's just, man, like, yeah, we're, we're going to do 40 million next year. Oh, okay, great. You're spending all this time raising this money to then, you know, go make $40 million in revenue or whatever, but you have a, you have no process in place. You're not spending any time reviewing your PNL. You're pouring money down the drain or you're pouring money and you don't really know where it's going. And I think the other thing Terrell that you mentioned that I think is really good is like understanding at the beginning, what your financial goals are, like where, what, what does success look like for you? Because I think if you don't understand what success looks like, like, even if I think about like in the movie scene, like, what does success look like at the end of Air Force One? Like at the end of Air Force One, success looks like, hey, he kicks all the terrorist butts and he comes out on top. That's what success looks like. And I think as a business owner, you need to understand what success looks like because it might not always be, hey, I'm going to be net net positive on my profit every single year. It may be, hey, our goal is to grow the business to X point until we know, hey, We're basically going to be putting money back in the business until we can get it to the point where we are positive. So I guess for me, my perspective is I'm not saying like, hey, right off the bat, year one, you need to like win. But I think the great thing about the stories and movies is the hero may fail first, but there's always a comeback, right? Like it's like, all right, like I struggled in the beginning. There was a bit of drama. I'm trying to figure it out, which is why I think taking the time to understand the income statement and how your business is performing in your story um, is, is important to real. And I think I like what you said of just, Hey, like you got to be in the drama and you got to balance it and figure out how to kind of come out on top and always correlate it to what your actual end goal is to make sure you're doing things that align with that. Absolutely. I mean, because, and I think that brings it to act three, act three is where the resolution or the send off happens. And Mm -hmm. one of the, I would say probably the, the I would say maybe recent or in the past few years kind of I would say one of the better send-offs that I've seen where it was a to be continued was Avengers where if, if Avengers Infinity War where it ends where Thanos snaps his fingers 
some of horrible. the people disappear <laughs> and where it's just like people knew like this that felt like it was a defeat. It felt like this was over. But now we knew there was another movie coming. Did we like, know this? This can't did be we? how the story ends. <laughs> um, and, and I think that they did an amazing job because what it did is, like you said, where sometimes when people are running a business, maybe that year they didn't make a profit or maybe whatever profit they made, they had to reinvest for right. an even bigger outcome exactly. in the following year, which is what ended up happening with Avengers, you know, in game is whatever losses they had in Infinity War became the storyline that helped them make an even better movie when they came back for the to be continued to yep. where that movie grows a ton of money. If you judged it based on the viewers and the box office sales, it was an amazing turnout because. One is they had some really good, strong characters. There was a lot of conflict and drama, but the characters were strong enough to overcome the drama. And then when you got to the conclusion, like they did a really good job of being able to conclude the storyline and really wrap some things up. So the way that plays out in your business is after you've gotten through your gross margin, you've covered all your operating expenses, there's still a few people that still want your attention. And that's going to be after you get to your operating income, there are people like, you know, banks and financial institutions for like your interest and also the IRS with your taxes. Now, the way that I always think about this is, you know, when you get to the end of the movie and you're sitting there and you're watching all the credits roll and you see all these names and you're like, none of these people were in the movie. They were all people behind the scene. And they still want their credit. And that's yep. the way I think about like the IRS and the bank where they don't actually help you run your business, but they still want their credit. Like they, right. want, their, they, yep. they want their recognition. So yep. they show up for that at the end. And I think what you really have to do is you have to make sure that you are able to hold people's attention enough from having a strong main character, meaning your revenue, your gross margin has to be pretty strong to be able to take on the challenge of your operating expenses. And you still got to have a little something left over to make it through paying the financial institutions on interest, paying the taxes, and then whatever's left over, that becomes your net income. Like That's what you get to walk away with. And I think when people start to think about their business and their P&L that way, I think it will help them understand their PL a whole lot better. No, that's good. That's good. That's good. I was gonna go, I could I could go into Avengers all day long, but let's stay on course. I think that was a very good, I think that was a very good wrap up and um to the topic that you mentioned, Terrell, which is how to read your income statement like a movie. Like Terrell literally just gave you the run rundown. And like Michael Jordan, in the last couple of seconds, you truly delivered. So Good job. Well, I appreciate that. Well, before we get to the tax tea, the last piece I always like to wrap up with because I think people should get some type of action item. Yes. Um, because all this information is great, but it's even better if you can actually implement. It. And I think mm -hmm. the best thing people can do is to really go back and work on Act One. Because as I said, if you think about any movie that bombed at the box office, or any movie you started watching for like the first 15 minutes and then turned it off. The reason why is because they had a horrible act one. That is most of the time why a movie does bad. And that's also why a business fails is because their act one is not all that good. And so I always tell every business owner is that even if you're an accountant and you support business owners, if you are helping business owners, you need to help them look and really analyze their act one. Help them analyze what's their revenue. Where is their revenue coming from? Like who are their top customers or what are their top types of clients? Looking yeah. at the cost of goods sold and figuring out like what is the acceptable targeted gross margin that this business needs to be able to thrive and be successful. And I think when you spend time there, I think you are going to set yourself up to have a great business. So that is your action item is to analyze 
your gross margin or your act one of your PL and come up with some strategies to make that stronger. Now, I am very interested in what the tax tea of the week is. So what do you have for us? The tax tea, the tax tea of the week might as well have been a movie. Okay. I picked <laughs> this one because literally it is so unbelievable. Like this could be a whole plot of a movie. I don't know if it would be a good one because it didn't end well, but uh, and there was no hero coming to save them. Maybe the hero in this case is the IRS and the Los Angeles <laughs> Department of Investigation um, or LAPD, as they call it, whatever. All right. So you ready for this week's tax tea? Yes. OK, so this week's tax tea is um, <laughs> is the story of two individuals. OK, a hairstylist and an actress based in Los Angeles. OK, okay do you see the sun coming up? L.A. I see. shiny. OK. Imagine a situation where I don't know exactly how this happened, but these two individuals, um, Anthony and I forget the name of the lady. Oh, Anna. Anna. So Anthony and Anna. Anna was an actress, an aspiring actress in L.A. And um, Andre, Anthony, Anthony was a hairstylist. So they met a gentleman who I don't know how they came across him. I don't know if they did some business with him. I don't know the story, but basically came across a 60 something year old man who was worth about 60 million dollars. Oh, wow. And about 60 worth about 60 million dollars. They somehow made their way to become a caregiver for this individual. And okay. in the process of being of making themselves a caregiver for this individual, they basically ran a fraud scheme on him and stole about maybe 20 million dollars. Um, oh, wow. from this person who was a physician. So let me let me kind of let me kind of set the scene. So basically. The, the recap here is that they're being charged with fraud, of course, um, and they're being charged with fraud because about two to three months before the death of this physician, they had basically gotten him to sign over power of attorney um, to them. And they were basically making transfers of this gentleman's um, funds into their own personal accounts. So let me just <laughs> let me take a step back because this is just really bad. So it's really, really bad. So basically they somehow met this physician. I don't know how they met him. They somehow met this physician. They met him when I think he had had a mental breakdown, had gone to prison. And somehow during this time, they had formed and developed a relationship with him, I guess enough to the point where this man trusted them. So when he had a mental breakdown, he went, ended up going to prison. And I don't think he contacted anybody else in his family and his friends. And somehow these two individuals got involved when he was in prison. And so basically what happened was when he was in prison or when he went to jail during this time, he gave the hairstylist, let's just say a friend who he thought was his friend, gave him power of attorney to be able to basically transfer money for his bail to get him out of prison. When mm -hmm. he got him out of prison, the hairstylist and this actress basically manipulated him and somehow refused to give over the power of attorney um, authority. And so we're still basically using that power of attorney to open accounts in the gentleman's name. Um, they had him on drugs. I mean, this is bad. They were giving him LSD wow. and marijuana. Yeah. They moved into his house because they were saying that they needed to be his caretaker. Um, because he, again, wow. he had had that mental <laughs> breakdown. I guess he wasn't a hundred percent. And he was like, you know, these are my friends. They care about me. They're trying to take care of me. So they were doing all this under false pretense. So they still had power of attorney. So what they were doing then is they were opening different bank accounts, um, mm -hmm. in the opening different bank accounts in the individual's name or this physician's name or opening bank accounts in their names and basically transferring again, because they have power of attorney, getting yeah. him to give them access to his bank account, like I said, worth 60 plus mm -hmm. million dollars and transferring those funds, maybe like a million or $2 million at a time to their own personal accounts. So they Ooh, were stealing. I can see where this is going. Yeah. So they were stealing from this gentleman. And basically the part where I said, this does not end well. And this is why I don't think this would be a good movie is because what happened was like, I think like four days before he died, they had him on LSD basically high on LSD, gave, mm -hmm. switched out the authentication, like, you know, the two-tier authentication step or whatever of his account, 
put his name, put his phone number to receive the authentication, authentication number, and basically gave, they gave themselves access to everything. Okay. Um, when he's, his health condition started to deteriorate, I guess somehow um, in this process, um, they cut him off from his family. So like isolated him from his family, told him that his family didn't want what was best for him. They were the only ones who could take care of him. Just a hot mess. So basically he was the only one. They were the only ones that he relied on. Basically a cut off his family and all that stuff. So a couple of days before he passed away, they transferred, I think like maybe 10 to $20 million. I don't remember. And he finally, during, before his death, he kind of, realized that these people were taking advantage of him, chased them away from the house. And they used the money that I guess they had stolen from him to go rent a luxury hotel where they proceeded to then watch him on the camera. Cause I guess they, maybe they oh, had wow. a ring. They had a ring, <laughs> ring camera. I don't know. I'm not, let me not put a ring in this. They had a camera in the house. So they were watching him from the house or whatever, I guess, making sure or whatever. I don't know what they were trying to do. Basically watching him from there to wait until he died. I don't know. And so then the man eventually passed away. And when he passed away and the family came and kind of started to unravel and discover all of these things, then they proceeded to sue the hairstylist and the mm -hmm. actress basically for defrauding him, manipulating him and abusing their power of attorney. Wow. I mean, this sounds like a Movie straight out of Hollywood. <laughs> Listen, this is a real life situation. I am reading this from the IRS.gov website. This is why I said, man, this is such a good one to do because literally, if you think about this, and I didn't even read the, the detail stuff, like some of the stuff that they did, mm -hmm. but basically mm -hmm. they're being sentenced to a maximum 20 years in prison for each of them for fraud um, and money laundering. They did some other stuff. I mean, it's just a hot mess, but I think- I mean, it's. You know, yeah, one of the things that I think about as an accountant is, and, and which I don't even, which I think I know that they didn't think about this, is there's a such thing as called gift taxes. Mm. So, like, you're only allowed to give a gift of X amount of dollars before it triggers or requires some type of gift tax to be paid. And I think that number is something like, 13,000 per person. Correct. So like, let's yep. say, for example, if I gave somebody a gift of, you know, $40,000, I can't just give them that gift and there'd be no gift tax return filed. So all the money that they were taking out of this man's account yep. and putting in an account that belonged to them, a lot of that probably should have had, unless they were, even if they were paying themselves for, let's say their caregiver services, mm -hmm. um, it's like there should have been some type of tax filing to where it's just like you guys have just set yourself up for some serious issues here. Yeah. And you know what's what's sad and disappointing? This was over like it wasn't even like six months. So it was like from 2017 September to like May. OK, no, a little bit over six months. What is that like nine months? So over a, a period of nine months, they were basically abusing um, the access wow. that this man had given them. I don't rem I I don't recall if it mentions how they actually developed the relationship but I think for me as an accountant one of the red flags that I see here is I don't think while I think that it was good to for him to have access to his funds I think he should have hired an accountant who actually was managing the fund for him because at 60 million dollars an online brokerage account for 60 million dollars like you should have someone that's like basically advising you like, okay, you just moved a million dollars yesterday. Hey, kind of like, you know, bringing it to your attention and say, okay, this is a problem. Um, and so I think just that, again, that level of checks and balances where you have almost like a money manager uh, and maybe not an mm -hmm. accountant, but a money, ma a money manager who's going to be asking some of these questions that kind of raise the red flag, because I think they would have caught this earlier because he wasn't in the best mental state to maybe be able mm -hmm. to catch these things. But at least if there was like a money manager or someone who was like, okay, you just moved $5 million in five days. Like this is unlike you based on, you know, the number of days, the number of, you know, years we've been working together. I think that would have probably raised an issue and a red flag relatively quickly. And maybe could have even saved the man's life because they basically said in the article that it was the fact that they gave him LSD that deteriorated 
um, the wow. like his mental health and the case of his life. So he probably could have survived and recovered if he was getting the proper treatment, but they abused mm -hmm. of this situation. So now it's like not only are you potential, not only are you facing up to twenty years in prison for you know fraud, but I don't know what kind of like would it not manslaughter, but I don't know what charges you could possibly be yeah, charged. Yeah, probably. There probably are some yeah. criminal charges in there. Uh, which yeah. I guess the IRS wouldn't disclose that because the IRS wouldn't be involved with the criminal charges on that yeah. because they're, they're not monetary in nature. Mm -hmm. um, I think there, still, there yeah. probably are some, you know, some other charges that were brought outside of the case that the IRS had, had yeah. with these two individuals. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but... Um, I think that's why it's important to have a professional or someone that will kind of will be able to identify, hey, something doesn't look right here. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, I mean, yeah. and I think in, in a case like that, this is where I always advocate for a team of, you know, a financial advisor is going to look out for your risk and your investments. Your accountant, mm -hmm. if it's a tax preparer, they're going to look out from the tax implications. If it's a bookkeeper, um, they're going to look out for just making sure that the financials make sense so you can keep an eye on what's happening. Um, and if it's the CFO, they're going to help you think strategically if you're like running a business or making some strategic investments. And I think, you know, at $60 million, you definitely need a team yeah. um, of people who are watching some stuff. So, wow, that's a wild story. So thank you for sharing this week's tax tea. Um, My pleasure. Uh, it it sounds like a movie, um, a bad movie at that. Uh, but it did sound like a movie. I told you, no, it was it was pretty serious. So yeah, it looks like they're being charged for money laundry, aggravated identity theft. I mean, there there is a lot. So yeah, the the guy that died wasn't even he was fifty seven years old, not even. Oh 60. wow, wow. Yeah, I will say that sounds like a Nigerian movie, right? Oh there. my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow. Okay. We're and for those of you that are listening that don't that don't know, my wife is Nigerian, and we wow. watch a lot of Nigerian movies um, from time to time. And so the storylines in Nigerian wow. movies can be pretty wild. Um, I, really, I really feel like that comment was a low blow because we're like almost at the end of the episode and I cannot even defend myself in this very moment. But you know what? I'm going to I mean, let you have there's that. no defense. I don't think there's any defense <laughs> necessary. I mean, a Niger me I mean, okay, fair. I would agree. That does sound like a Nigerian movie. I can't even lie. That sounds like one of those Nigerian movies where like, Honestly, you're just like, oh my gosh. And then it's it's sad because they say they he befriend. Okay, yeah, definitely a Nigeria movie. He was befriended. Uh, they befriended him. I guess they approached him knowing he was he was mentally ill and basically knowing mm -hmm. went into the situation knowing that they were going to be taking advantage of this guy. So that's unfortunate. But yeah. Because even as you were saying it, like I've seen a couple of Nigerian movies that have a similar where someone took advantage of someone because they had money. And they kind of moved in. And then in the end, they ended up getting caught this for what true. they were doing by some divine or, you know, <laughs> legal authority steps in and that then catches true. them. So I'm that just like, true. yeah, that okay, sounds fine. like a Nigerian movie fine. right there. It does sound like a Nigerian movie. Because, you know, Kenyan, <laughs> Kenyans don't make those kind of movies. But no, it does sound like a Nigerian movie. <laughs> awesome. No, well, you know? hey, everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, hope that you enjoy the format. I know we, 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 we probably laughed a lot more and talked a lot more, but I think at the end of the day, the goal is really how do you start to look at your finances better? How do you put some plans and some strategies in place to make sure you're protecting your business, you're building something that is profitable and that you have things in place to protect it until next time. Thanks for tuning in.